Welcome to Clean Cut Conversations, the podcast for exceptional Southern Black men. Join us as we delve into vital topics, including mental health, relationships, finance, self-care, and entrepreneurship. So, man, you know, I brought you this topic to talk mm-hmm. about, like, how nice guys finish last because we both are kind of nice guys, I would think. Yes. You know, we're yeah. well-dressed, well-mannered. Yeah. But I guess you can define our niceness at different levels. Mm-hmm. Weakness. You think so? Because, okay, let's be honest. Like, yeah. you can be, like, the judgmental. They said, we said, what, a judgmental asshole? But it's a nice Mm-hmm. And you call me just a straight asshole. Yeah, all the way. Damn. Yeah, you can do. So, it. There, yeah. but there is still a niceness you feel to it. Mm-mm. Damn. So you you just said I'm like a damn villain. But I just I bet see is that you you have they have to know you because like I it it doesn't bother me because I I already know like because I already know how to work that even problems. over the years. No, Diddy. Yeah, but I'm like I know how to work how you are. <sighs> <laughs> we're having an intervention people <laughs> okay well anyway okay, like i said we're going to talk about like like i said the origins of it okay. so let's go into it yeah so do you know where nice guys finish last came from i felt like i mean i've heard the narrative before but i never knew like you know like the where it came where where who started that stuff like mm. like i don't know it just you know it became a narrative Right, right. Especially in the modern dating scene. Oh, yeah. That's what they use it for a lot. But let's talk about it. So in 1946, the Brooklyn Dodgers manager, Leo DeRocher, discussed the struggling New York Giants. Hmm. You know, they were struggling. They weren't playing with aggression, basically. Okay. Okay. And now he was embellishing the now famous phrase, nice guys finish last. Okay. Because we know Jordan, any championship players, they got to have aggression. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care if you're the Golden State Warriors. If you Draymond Green, you better take that karate chop and mm-hmm. that, that elbow throw, mm-hmm. as yeah. you see today. So, like, huh. you know, when it comes to the nice guy syndrome, we have right. to understand that, like, it's it's a force that can be utilized for the good or okay. the bad. Okay. But let's talk about the definition of it. Okay. So they say that nice guys finish last refers to suppressing one's true needs, Mm -hmm. desires, and opinions in attempt to gain validation from others. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, bro, like, Mm -hmm. I'm going to share mine, but what are your personal experiences with the nice guy stereotype? And have you ever felt like pressured to prioritize others' happiness over your own? Yeah, I I mean, that that was pretty, that's pretty much my whole day in life Hmm. prior to, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, And even before getting into, uh, like, serious relationships, you know, when you're just testing the waters and you're just Testing, testing, dating different women. Like, um, I was, I was that nice guy, that extremely nice guy, the the poetic, you know what mm. I'm saying, and and just opening doors and not saying you shouldn't, but that chivalry. Know, yeah, I was doing the most that I thought you needed to do to woo a woman. Now, let me ask you mm-hmm. something: Was that based off a of tradition, if, off of being a Southern man? Because just how chivalry, Mama always tell you to. Well, your mother was mm-hmm. raised in the South, though, right? Mm-hmm. So chivalry is at its finest when it comes to you. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Me too. I'm just yeah. being completely honest. Yeah. Like, And sometimes, I guess today, that's a little too nice to open up a car door. They look at you funny. Some of them have. Yeah, like, what'd you do that for? Mm-hmm. What do you want from me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you expect? Yeah. And it's like, hold on. I'm just opening the car door. Like, yeah. You, do you ask the chauffeur all this when he comes right. at the limo to pick, you know, to open the door up? The reason why they don't is because that's his job. He's getting paid for it. I can see why they question that. Well, that's my role as a Southern man. Mm-hmm. So what's the difference? I'd see. One's paid and one's... One doesn't have an intention. The other one does. Think about the chauffeur. His intention is just to do his job. Uh, didn't they have a power incident episode where she was getting freaky diggle with the... Yeah, but you know that was a situation where her husband was already off. <laughs> he was already getting off on that Latina chick, you know. So she's like, "Bump it, I'm gonna do the chauffeur," you know. Plus, he was close to the family too. So I mean, you know, that was. But see, okay, so with me, man, mm-hmm. I know you know. With me, I've been in multiple relationships mm-hmm. with older, mature women. Okay, I'm gonna give it about ten to fifteen years ahead of me. Damn, you know what I'm saying? And they all have been single mothers. Damn. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I feel that they treated me because they're up in age mm-hmm. as a last option. Mm. Mm. I'm the one. 
The Be- Last Dragon. Right. You know what I'm saying? So Because? Because I feel that you say I don't have this nice aura, but through women's eyes, I, they, I guess I'm screaming daddy aura because of my niceness, in a sense. I'm not screaming player. Well, yeah, you, mean, you got a different vibe when it comes to women now. I mean, but I mean, um, you, but, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead. But no, but I'm not seen as a hoe. No. Would you, would you, so when no, you look no. at me, you're not, no, no homo. Like, no, I didn't see you as a hoe. Mm-mm. I didn't see you when I was like, no. Nah, so what I do you see me as then? I, what, at, at, on a social level? On a social level. On a social level, you're like, you're a great person to talk to. Like, you know, you know, we'll talk on the phone three to five hours. No, you know no. I mean? But then from somebody who may not know you would think that, like, you're intimidating. You're very intimidating. Mm. And I know you've been told that before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You know, you know, this is not the, this ain't no, you know what I'm saying? I, but, uh, but I'm not saying that's how he is overall, but, like, your persona can be intimidating. Almost like. No, nah, he's not a Mr. Nice Guy for sure. But then now you're telling me this side. Right. Because, see, I had to realize and look in the mirror and mm. say, what energy or what vibe am I giving off? Okay. You know, some say, or used to say when they took advantage of me, mm-hmm. oh, you're, you're just you're a little too nice. I hate that word. I hate that, right? Mm-hmm. So I had to learn <laughs> how to be open when communicating. Right. Like my desires and my needs out of a relationship. Right. I'll take on the kids, but like, I think we've talked about it earlier. Like when it comes to teenagers, I can do teenagers, but I can't do grown men. Right. Because I feel like in a relationship, this is my flaw. Mm -hmm. I feel I always have to fix something. Mm. If you know me all these years, I've always seemed to be the MacGyver. Yeah. The Tony Stark. Yeah. The one that's always fixing something. Yeah. And if there's nothing that needs to be repaired, I just go on to another uh, quest. Yeah, you you invent something else. You invent something else. See, and that's my problem yeah. is that I need to sometimes accept those flaws and try to learn how to build off of those flaws with the women I deal with. Mm. Don't try to fix them sometimes, actually. Hmm. Just kind of tolerate it. Because there's some flaws, like you said, apparently I am I come off as uh, not just the asshole type, but more of, um, how can I say? Uh, d- 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 I don't want to say uptight, but I, I, d- I'll just say not as inclusive okay so there just is kind of just stay in the background for a minute like ah i'll be okay for right now let me peep the scene so it's like some type of batman shit in the shadow batman the, yeah <laughs> i mean no that's real that, that's and what real. are you the joker i say the riddler because i don't i don't really the diddler or the riddler no the riddler <laughs> riddler no no, no 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 you you, you kind of shaped like the diddler <laughs> yeah, no, hold on. Look, <laughs> look look we ain't taking nothing no take that take nothing no take nothing no i mean i, I would say the riddler because i mean i think the joker would be more the antagonizer mm. i think he antagonized i wasn't an antagonizer i just you know just i got a riddle for you for your tittle riddle for your tittle but let me ask you something mm-hmm. because you send out these little riddles mm-hmm. do you feel that it that women miscommunicate you yeah, or misjudge you because yeah. you're not allowing them to know who you are. So are you being a Riddler or are you being a seducer? Man, golly, that's, that's tough, bro. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, oh, shoot, my CPU's crashing. Wait a minute. Like, I would say, man, I'm more of, I'm <laughs> exactly. a little bit of both. What was the word? Are you a Riddler, a Riddler or a seducer? Because you like to give out these little riddles and confuse women. I'm a sediddler. That doesn't I, even sound I seduce right. seduce and sediddle. I mean, seduce Did and sediddy? riddle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a sediddler. Mm. Mm. Well, so like when it comes to relationships, like mm-hmm. do you tend to, like me, it seems like I tend to date older women. Okay. Have you distinguished the differences when it comes to dating older women to, from young women? Yeah, older women know what they want off the rip. They ain't really about that bullshit. They kind of they they're they're, they're kind of setting their ways too, as far as like what they will and won't do, what they can and can't do. You know what I mean? Um, they're a little they're a little more tough. They're tough cookies, man. Like ah man, I can't you can't really right 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 can't really maneuver them. But, but let the me ask pros of it. Go ahead. Yeah, the pros of it is like most of them pretty much got their ish together. Okay, so yeah. let me ask you something. Mm-hmm. Are they the ones that tell you that you're the nice guy or is it the young ones? It's the young ones, man. Okay, so why don't you feel that the older mature women 
don't use that term for you. Well, because the older women I've dated, they came from the old school where a man is a nice guy, presentable guy and a real gentleman, open the doors and stuff like that. You know, do the manly deeds of, you know, mm-hmm. taking care of things, supporting, providing, helping out when, you know, when you got the strength to help a woman out. You know what I'm saying? They actually look for that in a man. So like, you don't feel that they're being desperate because they're getting older. Uh, and they they tend to look over that. Cause I, yeah, I think I think that. Yeah. I mean, they really do. Because most of the older women I have dated, they would just say, you are such a gentleman. OK. They they really appreciate the the gentleman part about me you know what i mean the younger the younger chicks were like mm, you're just too nice like i get too eclectic you know the the conversations were too deep you know what i'm saying mm. uh like i told you before someone said well, i you know i well you need to be more you know what i'm saying like well that ain't gonna do with color or race or anything but you know when they told me you know well, i ain't more blacker than you it was a white I've had that happen to me yeah from another so what do you mean? You want me to be a mean yeah. ass? Is is your depiction of a nice guy as a black man, a hood dude that's been mean all the time? But do you blame the media and cult or you know from exploiting our culture like that? Because think about it: does she really acknowledge you as being a black man, or does she acknowledge the culture that you're embraced in? It's definitely the culture, but see, she's got she's got me mixed up with like I'm a black dude, but I'm not in the hood culture. So in her mind, she's thinking all black dudes are supposed to be belligerent. But then what attracted her to you then? Because you obviously... got to ask. Oh, oh, what attracted her to me? Yeah. Damn, bro. Well, just, just... Oh, I mean, yeah. Now, yeah, see, that was a hood tactic right there. See, see, all ladies, right. see how he just all did right. that? He just went straight for the ass. I mean, you know. And so I didn't those... even get to ask the question. Mm, bars. <laughs> he went for the ass and he didn't even ask <laughs> i mean because, i mean yeah i mean that's just what it was i think she was going to be first for their attractiveness mm. that's it just first and then when i started talking she was like yeah yeah she needed somebody a little more edgy hood mm. didn't talk as proper she said you talk proper I'm like, well see with my tactic like see you since you said i come off like an asshole my thing is i still have i guess i kind of look like a nice guy, you know, kind of yeah. dressed. Yeah. But then I'm very assertive. There you go. Mm-hmm. But what I like, I know what I want, but then it can be a little aggressive. Yeah. I'm not really passive aggressive. Right. Like that. Cause I am confrontational. Definitely not. Yeah. Definitely and, not and that, but see, it's helped me and it's hurt me. See, you're, I figure that you're more like passive aggressive. And it's hurt me more than it's helped. Then it's helped because <laughs> knowing you, it's always like, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Let me be straight mm-hmm. up. For, <sighs> they ain't fucking me like they should. They mm-hmm. ain't. Mm-hmm. They're not comforting. That nothing's cooked. Mm-hmm. I'm over here having to do the cooking and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I'm mm-hmm. having to be a dad, but I'm not getting nothing out of this. Mm-hmm. I'm just getting problems and heartache. Mm-hmm. You're not even getting ass out of it. It's not even my child either. But go ahead. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, the situation like that, you know. But see, in that situation, because you know, I dated women mm-hmm. with children, mm-hmm. right? She was a like teenage right yeah yeah teenage so but you enjoyed that experience you've dated all types of levels haven't you yeah like different yeah, age yeah. groups yeah like, i enjoyed the. i enjoyed the, uh, as far as the, them having the children yeah 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 the one i have to say <laughs> that was a good experience were the adolescence was the between like 10 and 15 ages of kids that was that was comfortable to be around with because like i said those are impressionable ages where kids are wanting to learn something from a male figure so that's the age where before their ego starts to yeah before they start smelling their draws yeah yeah once and thinking ego. i don't need nobody now because daddy um, wasn't there oh man so man let's talk about it man so mm-hmm. back to the nice guy like so I, I researched some pros and cons right okay they said uh basically it was from this article i'll put the article in the description box okay but attractiveness that's the pros okay that we're able to create stronger relationships right we reduce stress okay and we have improved social skills compared to your average man. Okay. Your your bad boy. Okay. Um, but the cons are is that we get put in a friend zone. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. become the doormat. Mm. We get frustrated. Mm. To get our way, we use passive aggressive tactics, mm-hmm. and we tend to blame others instead of self reflecting mm. and worrying about our own growth. You know what I'm saying? That doormat part got me. The door, well, okay. So you feel that others take advantage of your good nature? I think a lot of people do. 
not even just me. I think uh, I think it's in humans. I think it's in human beings' nature nature to take advantage of certain things subconsciously. Hmm. You know, you got some that that are that are conscious and do the Cruella Deville on your ass. Hmm. Then you got some that are just they're not doing it on purpose, mm -hmm. but nature tells them, "Well, they let me get by with it." Right, right, right. So I'm gonna keep walking over this nigga. Wow. To be a doorman, huh? Man. So you saying that you that you, we should blame we sh we should blame ourselves for not you know because it's like an incredible it's like a it's like a Hulk syndrome right right you know he holds it in it's like all right man if I get too mad gonna... I'm gonna turn into something that right. you really don't like right so is being passive a bad thing sometimes to me it is it's because you're not being real with yourself mm -hmm. you're not honing in on what's really in irritating you okay. It's all about open communication because at the beginning, if you're open with somebody and you're mm -hmm. able to communicate with them, yeah. you will be able to sustain a healthy relationship with okay. that person. Right. But you're not sustaining a healthy relationship with yourself by, by not saying nothing, okay. by exploding like a tea kettle yeah. or exploding into the hole. Because yeah. other than that, it looks like you have some anger issues Yeah. externally looking yeah. at you. You know what I'm saying? So we all have to look at when it comes to being like the nice guy, right? Mm -hmm. We have to be open with our boundaries. Hmm. I think we mentioned that before. Yeah. Because I think a lot of my failed dates, man, and my failed relationships have been because I didn't set the boundaries. Mm. I exploded into yeah. the hole, which I can't gotcha. do that. Yeah, yeah. But in the end, it's me communicating what I will tolerate and what mm. I won't tolerate. Mm. And in knowing you, sometimes, man, you do. There be instances, man, when we'll be like filming. Mm -hmm. And I be in my moods. Mm -hmm. You know, I do go left and right. I was like, that's me. That's my flaw. Mm -hmm. But to me, I think that comes from um, emotional abandonment for me. Mm. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? I'm just being open. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good to hear that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's more of emotional abandonment yeah. so my emotions can go left and right, even okay. as a male. Yeah. You know, it's like, be a man, but I'm like, ah, I hate hearing that sometimes. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. it's like, how am I going to let this out? Yeah, right. Because when I was younger, you know, like my parents did divorce. Okay. Right. And to me, I mean, it didn't bother me at the time as much as it bothered my older brother. Yeah. But I, I can't really speak on that because, you know, he has a different thought process. Mm -hmm. But I know that feeling alone and my mother was in her masculine mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. which she currently still is in her masculine. You know, sometimes I have to say, hey, you got to get in your feminine a little bit. Yeah. But... <laughs> What I learned is that she was the one, as a woman, telling mm. me not to cry and the man up. Mm. Okay. Gosh. So to me, I guess when I see women, it seems like I attract the older, mature women that are kind of strong. Yeah. But it never works out because through years of therapy, through yeah. years of talking, I've learned to channel more into my masculine and understand that mm. you can balance the both feminine and masculine energy. Okay. You know, Fair. because that that is important important to know is that a man carries both feminine and masculine energy yeah, yeah yeah like i never got a chance to really feel the situation okay let it absorb mm -hmm. so like when you go into acting i may can deliver lines but then it may be tough for me to actually feel certain lines like yeah. certain yeah. emotions so if you're like josh just go into her treat her like shit treat mm -hmm. her like this yeah oh that's already yeah, yeah, embedded yeah. because my mom was already telling me at the time, look, you got to get up, be a man, you got to do this. Right, right, right. And this is a woman. Right. To, you don't, uh, you know what I'm saying? It should be my pops. My my pops mm -hmm. was always the one that was pretty emotionally stable. I got you. So it was the opposite for me. And that's why I feel that I'm thrown everywhere. When it comes to women, I feel like they see me as aggressive. Mm -hmm. But then I was taught by a woman that was mm -hmm. aggressive. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. I know. <laughs> real life y'all real take life take out the trash you know? <laughs> but nah dang that's okay you know that, that you know I'm, I'm glad you said that cause yeah I didn't I can okay so now I can look at that a little different you know what I mean so with 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 so in other words you're saying okay let's just say whomever woman you decide to date later on in the future and stuff like that mm. will you still be looking for that type of woman that how your mother was are you looking for that strong one that got a little more masculine than feminine, or you're going to be seeking something with a little more feminine way so you can, you know, be, you know, less aggressive, I guess. 
No, like no. I mean, I'm, it's it's I'm, a question. Like, right? I'm searching for someone more <laughs> feminine. Okay, definitely not masculine because okay. I've acknowledged that energy now. Okay, you know what I'm saying? That's just me being open. Uh, I don't think it's like two batteries. I don't think two positives connect and two mm. negatives connect. It's always a negative and a positive. Mm. I prefer a woman to to make me feel. Do you feel that feminine woman will help? Uh, will help you with that terminology we're dealing with with Mr. Nice Guy and then not so Mr. Nice Guy. Like having a feminine woman like you like you were asking for, what would that do to you internally now that what we're speaking on? I feel that like honestly, man, the, dealing with a feminine woman that her job is to make me feel. Okay. It would right. make me I guess it would bring down that masculine aura to where it's like, hey, he's approachable. Hmm. Okay. There's a difference. Don't get me wrong. We can come up, come out swinging like Hulk smashing. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. But because it is a masculine world. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's sad, but it is like that. There's right. not a balance. Right. And there never was. Right. In a sense. But hmm. to me, it would help me because some of those emotions I was unable to process, okay. and I'm still growing and I'm still learning. Gotcha. I'm a student of life. Gotcha. Gotcha. So in order to get better, I got to understand my flaws. And that is a missing element that a masculine woman can't give me. Mm. I already possess those traits. Right. You know, okay. I just don't have periods. Mm. Okay. No, <laughs> you know true. what I'm saying? I just don't yeah, have yeah, periods. Yeah, yeah. I just, I already have something. I'm a growing person. So mm. give me something new, something I don't know. Okay. Which is going to be more of that feminine energy. So ladies, I may come off assertive, strong, and aggressive, but please don't, don't, don't be offended. Is because I was taught by a woman mm. that was in her masculine. She was hurt. Mm. But at the same token, she was successful, you know? Mm. And she's successfully married. But in this case, I try to find a sense of balance in myself. And I need a feminine woman to do that. Oh, I just heard Diddy song coming in the back. I need a girl to ride, ride, ride. Oh, no, you're the diddler. <laughs> That's well, a, that's well, you, you're the diddler. So. I'm the diddler, yeah. I'm 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 the sediddler. You know what I mean? Sediddler. You know, and I mean, even just talking, just uh, Mr. Nice Guy thing. I mean, like, right. I I I, hmm, I enjoy being the nice guy. I do, but I I, I but I, I want to be the nice guy. With you know, what I'm saying with 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 like you said, like with some boundaries. You can still be a nice guy and have boundaries and won't be looked at as mean. A doormat. Yeah, you want to look that as a doormat. doormat. Like, he's like, a nice guy, but, you know, don't think you can get away with some of the stuff. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. I don't want to so, be that way. So let me ask you something. Do you mm -hmm. feel that the reason why people treat you like a doormat mm -hmm. is because you have no self-respect? I probably ain't got no respect for myself. Yeah, you're probably right. Because I, I, don't, I didn't look at... I didn't respect myself to just tell myself that I'm not going to take being stepped on no more. So Because if I was outside of myself... I would probably be the person to step on myself too. Damn. Because I ain't going to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? And that's dangerous. That is dangerous. Because that's what got me in my, in, when I was in, I was in a domestic. I got tired of being a doormat. So let me ask you something. <laughs> yeah. With the domestic situation mm -hmm. that got you incarcerated mm -hmm. for a little bit. Yeah. Do you feel that she was in her masculine or feminine? Always in her masculine. Okay. So what do time. you consider, what do you consider yourself more in? Feminine or masculine? Probably a little more feminine than masculine. If I'm just being honest. So, I mean, okay. I'm talking overall. Okay, but let me ask you something. Why yeah. is my situation? Because mm -hmm. you're close to your mother, and apparently that's the person that brings the feminine, and your dad was probably the masculine. There was yeah. a balance, right? Yeah. Everybody played their roles. It was slick, yeah. It was slick. Yeah. Like, in my situation, the mother was more in her masculine, mm. and my father was more in his feminine. Not in a bad way. No, though. no, I know what you mean. Yeah, you're so, just talking like, about So, like, my question things. is, like, compared to your situation, it's like, I would understand, I guess, me, if I'm more my feminine, because I was, my person I was looking up to was always, I know, more in her masculine, but she was a fem female. Yeah. Yours was actually a female in her feminine and a male in his masculine. That's Now, that was with my dad and my mom, my stepdad and my mom. With my stepdad, with my stepmom and my dad. Okay. It was both masculine. Both military people. Ooh. Oh, so there were was... fights all, all the time. Me, him, him, her, all three, you know. <laughs> so I'm just saluting like with both hands. That's, that's WWF right there. It was. 
<laughs> Dang, bro. Yeah, you know, we, we we talk about it on another story if we talk about abuse. But like that's same here. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah. So <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, with that, I think seeing that as children, you know what I mean, depending on how our parents are treating each other. Right, right, right. I think that really makes us who the Mr. Nice guys we are or that we aren't. I think my Mr. Nice guy came from okay. My mother was really sweet. She really taught me how to be a really sweet guy. Mm. And no matter what, always respect the woman. Don't put your hands on them. I don't care if they choke you. Don't put your hands on them. That's what my mom was like that. Like mm -hmm. women just couldn't almost really do no wrong in a way. Right. Okay. Especially when it came to physical stuff. Like, okay. If she hits you, you ain't supposed to do, you know, you just hold her back. I'm like, okay, cool. All right. All right. So I started being like, all right. I'm going to be extra nice to women now. So she was taught you chivalry. Big time. Okay, see, my mother, on the other mm. hand, on the other spectrum, mm. she was all about imp making great first impressions. Mm -hmm. Okay. What women look for externally. Mm -hmm. Mm. Not internally. See, chivalry oh. to me is more of like, yeah, externally I can see it. But she was actually honing in on something that was inside you mm -hmm. and bringing it out. Okay. With me, it was inside me, but it ain't coming out. Yeah, it's I like you need to worry about your dress. You need to worry about the way you look. You need to worry about not crying, being this way, because that's how women. That's, you, that's how women see you. That's where you got that from. This whole y'all, I always wonder because like this nigga be dressing right, but I always wonder. It was like every it was like every time we step out, it's just even in your aura it was like. Oh, man. You know, what I'm saying? I'm straight. You know, just something. This I'm like, bro. What's up? Maybe just go into the store, bro. You know? Right. Right. Do you want to share your story? Well, join us at Clean Cut Conversations. Let's talk mental health, relationships, finance, self-care, and entrepreneurship. Your voice matters, so let's make a difference together. Yes, once again, if you want to be on the show, feel free to hit us up via email or on Instagram. We would love to have you as a special guest on Clean Cut Conversations, the exceptional podcast for Southern Black men. Or the other way around. But anyways, yeah. man, let's talk about this, man. So we're talking about being in our feminine as masculine figures mm -hmm. and how our mothers were kind of... Influential to our... Uh, yeah. Character on how we are with women. Yeah, because like I told you, my mother's more in her masculine. Mm -hmm. She's always in that hustle mode. Mm -hmm. We say it's the Asian in her. Mm -hmm. You know, because they're always hustling. Yeah. They, they got all the wig shops. They got everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They serve the black community pretty mm -hmm. well. Yeah, they do. I you know what I'm that. saying? That's pretty well. Yeah. Um, but in the end, it's like, did she have the hustle mentality? Or did, is it because she had to be in her masculine growing up for survival and she never got out of that mode and she couldn't be in her feminine with my father? Hmm. I mean, I, well, I mean, you would know that. Like, well, right. No, no, you're right, yeah, right. Because my father, you know, I felt that he was more I, emotionally I can approach him. He's been in certain situations in my life to where the story gets deeper and yeah. we'll get deeper and deeper later on in the series of this podcast mm -hmm. with me. But I just feel that like I can be confused mm -hmm. when I see it physically. Mm. Everything is visual with me, mm -hmm. you know, not really audio. Yeah. So this podcast stuff is new because mm -hmm. I'm really visual. But then we add yeah. the video and I'm straight. Right. But like my father, I felt had played both roles because mm -hmm. he did run the commissary. He mm -hmm. was a director, store director. So gotcha. he, re he he led a bunch of people. Gotcha. But in the end, he knew how to empathize with them, mm -hmm. get in his feelings in a sense okay. to where he can bring the best out of you. Yeah. See, women do that. Mm -hmm. I feel. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like, like, because I wasn't brought up like that. Yeah. You know, uh, the women, man, uh, I, 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 and I'll say that a lot. A lot of times they don't. It's not their fault. A lot of the times, like mm -hmm. what 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 they embed into you, especially as a as a mother and stuff like that. But then we can't hide away from the end result of the situation, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and being that you know, being that you know these things about you know how your mother was, and then how that you know made you. Um, do you feel like that it it took a focus off? some other things that may would kind of, you know, you know, you know, kind of, you know, smooth the edges out a little bit. You feel me? Cause you were just talking about like, man, you know what I'm saying? 
every time I step out, you know what I'm saying? Everything got to be like this, got to be like Crisp, that. clean. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Clean like, cut. Yeah, clean cut. You know what I mean? And, and it, but, but, but then you were talking about your father, your brother had, a, well, he's a Libra. So he had this particular She's kind of balance. Also, yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Crazy. So, I mean, he had this kind of balance about him. You said that you would get more emotional support from him, mm -hmm. right? When traditionally you usually get the emotional support from your mother. She's new to the nurturer, like, oh, baby, it's okay. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? She'll rub your head or whatever and lay in the, you know, the other dude, the, your man, your, your your father normally is like, all right, man, come on, man. We got to, you know, we got to toughen up, man. We got to, come on, man. We got to get up. Ain't no crying. Ain't no. Right, right, right. So you had the opposite. Yes. And it, and it, and it made you who you are, I guess is what, you know, how your demeanor is at times. Right, right. Is that a reflection of that? Like, is that you fighting against that? You know, I feel it's not me fighting against it. I feel that it's me accepting it. Okay. And and uh, evolving from it. Okay. Because I didn't have the traditional parents. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Playing okay. their roles. Yeah. That doesn't make me any less of a man. Mm -hmm. I feel it just makes me a unique man. Do you look at women differently? At one point, when my mother was raising me, okay. I was at a point where I was like, I don't need a woman for anything. I cook. Okay. You know me. I, yeah, I yeah, cook. Yeah. No, I of course. can clean. My house stays clean. Yeah. I dress accordingly. Yep. Yep. And I was it, like, I iron my clothes, yeah. wash my clothes, wash the car. I do yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. But I was taught by a woman that, yeah, you need to do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So in my head, I'm, I'm like, well, what, what is a woman going to do? Right. Besides have sex and re -pro procreate. Yeah. Mm. And that was where the confusion I feel mm. lied in me. Okay, that's what arose. I feel were like okay, now I should be able to rely on a woman to do that. That's part of being in a relationship is yeah. someone bringing value to your life, yeah. something that you lack in. Yeah, <laughs> if I'm a multi tool mm -hmm. and I can do everything, then I'm gonna be lonely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be lonely. Yeah. And to me, that really, I feel hurt the situation because today women say men are not masculine. They're mm -hmm. sassy, right? Mm -hmm. Well, would you consider me, the way I was brought up, the result of a sassy man? Hmm. I didn't need women. Right. I dress nice and clean. Right. I won't tolerate certain things. Okay. My emotions could be left and right. Okay. Would that be considered a sassy man? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think, no, I don't think that's sassy. No, that's not sassy. It's just because the roles were reversed. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's like it's like when you see a cat, yeah, you're a cat yeah. guy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. A cat hangs around dogs, right? But yeah. I've seen, uh, sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I've seen where dogs act like cats and cats, and cats act, act like, like dogs. dogs. Yeah. Is that Would that be confusing to you? Would you still see that dog as a dog if you act like a cat? I I, no, I, I would. I would. Okay. It's just that, that dog is just influenced because I mean I've I've had but cats that would the, the, I've seen the, they bark like a dog like how they wow. would try to right right you know what I mean and and then the dogs would do the butt up playful thing with the with the you know yeah, that the, wiggle that wait, Shaquille O'Neal thing right right it's interesting it, it, but it was uh, the, uh, their influence right but that wasn't the dog's fault probably it was probably wasn't the cat's fault. They weren't in their nature. They well, weren't in their jungle. Well, they were put together in the same place to where, well, most time when you have a cat, they don't have another cat to look up to. They're looking at either the dog or the human being. Mm. So the cat still has an instincts, natural instincts, but then it's influence. See, there's a difference between influence and instinct. Mm -hmm. So his influence was dogs barking all the time, rolling on the floor, jumping around. That's all, you know, it's see, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Right, right. A, a, a dog, a cat is gonna try to bark too, depending on who's the dominant dog, who's more dominant in the situation. Though, see, and that's a good question because yeah. a girl I was dating, mm -hmm. she seemed to be. I used to tell her, I was like, damn, you're in your masculine. Mm -hmm. She tried to make logic out of her emotional mm -hmm. state, mm -hmm. so she tried to use less emotional reasoning mm -hmm. and more logical reasoning. But I said. Why are you doing that? Because mm -hmm. remember, I was brought up differently. Yeah. I'm like, visually, why are you doing that? It's yeah. okay for you to be an emotional, and you know, wreck or right. make decisions based on your emotions. Right. 
that's where I come in and spit the logic. Mm -hmm. You're allowing me to play my role mm -hmm. and utilize my natural instincts. Right. I'm still a man. Right. But at the end of the day, I'm like, this ain't going to work out if you try to make logic and I'm trying to make logic. Mm. Then there's no feeling. Right. Because, like, for example, like, if there was a decision... If your kid killed somebody, mm. let's take it to the extreme, right? Yeah. If their kid killed somebody and you're like, logically, you'd be like, yeah, you, <laughs> you're going to jail, brother. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. And yet you were wrong. Right. The woman would be like, he did, but he's not a bad kid. Right. Yeah, say that a lot. Either, it's okay. He's not a bad kid. Yeah. And to me, that's you using emotional reasoning. It's mm -hmm. because you have some type of attachment to it. Yeah. Me, someone coming into the relationship, which I have been in a lot of mature yeah, yeah. women's well single mothers relationships. Yeah. Uh they saw it as like, well, you're just being cold and distant. You don't know because you don't have kids. Yeah. I hate that term. Yeah. That is the worst thing yeah, don't tell me single that. mothers can tell a man that's entering their relationship with no kids. Right. You don't understand because you don't have kids. Mm. Well let me understand Right. Because I'm trying to be a part of your life yeah. and your kids are a part of your life. There you go. Let me play my role and give you what you're missing. Mm -hmm. That's simple as that. Otherwise, I just, I'm not going to understand then. Right. The I'm just it. some boy toy, some, uh, you know, something <laughs> to mess around with. Yeah, yeah. On a side, a side piece. Yeah, yeah. And she tried to sit there and say, you, you're not a side, you're not a side piece. Mm -hmm. Like you had to get the last word. Yeah. And I'm like, this ain't going to work. Yeah. This ain't going to work. Mm. Is because you're not allowing me to play my role. I want you to be in your feminine. Yeah. I want you to use emotional reason. I don't want you to be logical. Yeah. Because then I feel like I'm talking to you. Yeah. Mm. Like, man, how are we going to get out of this? I don't know. But this is a situation where it's a kid involved and we're trying to be logical with the shit. Yeah. And we're not thinking about, damn, did he, was he brought up wrong? Mm. Oh, yeah, he was molested. Oh, yeah, yeah. he was. See, that's the woman... I feel to really get involved with the emotional aspect yeah, yeah. of that crime. Mm -hmm. And, but anyways, man, let's talk about this concept mm -hmm. from Dr. Uh, Robert Glover. Mm -hmm. So he defines nice guys, right? Okay. As the deer concept. Mm -hmm. Deer as a deer in headlights. All right. Defend, explain, excuse, rationalize. Okay. As a nice guy, do you see yourself using those traits? Do you see yourself defending yeah. Your your actions, okay. explaining your actions mm -hmm. to the other being, okay. excusing them in a way to where it's like, well, this is basically coming up with some type of rational yeah, yeah. reasoning. Why they are. Right. And then the last is rationalize, of course. So those two can kind of play together. Yeah. Creating, ex would, rationalizing your excuse. I would have to say, yeah. Definitely. As a seducer, as a nice guy. As a nice guy. Okay. I'm a deer. I'm a deer. I'm definitely a deer when it comes to that in that situation. And I've been burnt almost 90% of the time. Let no me, STD. Let me ask you something. Yeah. Do you see... Okay, let me say this. Who burnt you? More white women or black women? Black. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel that the perception of niceness... Mm -hmm. Think of the concept. Mm -hmm. Varies between different cultures. Yep. Off the rip. Okay, so you've been with a white... Uh, you've in you've dated that. white women, mm -hmm. and yep. they seem to... This concept seemed to go work well with them because rationalize you... White, so, white women were... I hate to say this voice. Go, on. Mm. go ahead and say it. White women were just more <laughs> submissive, man. But white women were more understanding. Mm. Uh, white women didn't make a big deal about being Mr. Nice Guy, they actually love that. Like, they actually love that. I mean, boy, I, the, you know, just being real, I mean, they, the, boy, there's they, they, some strange things for a piece of change to me. <laughs> just being the nice guy. Mm. I, I didn't have to put on this persona like I didn't care or like, oh, whatever. I mean, I didn't care about it. No, like, they really respect respect. So when you say, when you try to be the nice guy towards black women. It gets taken advantage of. In my experience, it's been taken advantage of about 80% of the time Damn. because I've told her too nice or I'm intimidating. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not intimidating. I'm just 
I'm doing everything that your ex wasn't doing. And that scares you because you're used to the domestic. You're used to him cheating on you. You're used to him beating on you. And you're used to him doing all everything else in between. Mm. Just heard a story the other day. You know, it's just real talk. A a dude had the nerve to ask his girl if his homie could hit because he heard how good her stuff is. Like, Oh, no. No. What does that make her look like? Yeah, I mean, what you mean? You know what I'm saying? But see, that's sad that our (laughs) women get approached with negotiations like that. For them to feel comfortable that they can do that, first of all, to the woman. So, like, I'm not saying the woman is allowing that, but it's like, I, I... and this is being real. This don't mean I like white women over black women. All I'm saying is, is in my experience, I've had less problems with white women as overall. Mm. You know, I mean, there's all, I mean, I had one, but I mean, but overall, my experience with white women has been pretty stressless. See, that's different for me. Okay. I don't attract white women. Interesting. You don't? No. The, the, no, I, I may listen to music. We may hang out in groups. Yeah, yeah. But they but don't come up to you. No. Like, I never had one being like, ooh. At least I know of. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know what I'm saying? I've been always attracted to sisters. Because right. what they said, I, I forgot what podcast it was. It was mm-hmm. like, white women are the first to compliment you when you walk in a room. I agree. Oh, okay. It still happens at work. Every does, day. Does it? Because for me, it's different. It's the opposite for me. I know. See, this yeah. is why... This is why it's so confusing for me. Yeah. Because what you say uh-huh. they don't do for you, they do for me. Yeah. And is it because maybe my mom? I don't know. That's a good it, question. That's what I was raised, you know, she was in her masculine and then I come in like, okay, basically my mom okay. created me, I feel, as a shell of what women want on okay. the outside. All right. Externally. Okay. Well cut, a well dressed, clean mm-hmm. cut. Yeah. You know, financially good, yeah. sound. Yeah. That's driven yeah. everything. Does art. Right. But then inside, it's like, I feel that, like, it's a struggle emotionally for me. Mm. And I feel that, let's be honest, yeah. like 50 Cent, I mentioned this in Herschel's yeah, yeah. Uh, interview, we strive off of broke, broke yeah. figures. Yes. Like, they, when you look at me at, on the outside, you're like, mm-mm, he's, yeah. he can be kind of intimidating. Yeah, yeah. But I think women, their intuition kicks in. That's something mm. I don't really have Yeah, like that. They see maybe a broken male that he's trying to do. He's trying to look like the number one man. Yeah. But inside, he's like really the most broken mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I'm asking you, is that you? Emotionally, I could feel broken. Okay. Like, like I said, that's why I, I, I strive to be a perfectionist. Gotcha. I strive to top myself and do the best in everything that I do. Mm-hmm. Like nothing's ever usually good enough in my eyes. No even if I put my hands on it. No room for error, Slick. Do you want to share your story? Well, join us at Clean Cut Conversations. Let's talk mental health, relationships, finance, self-care, and entrepreneurship. Your voice matters, so let's make a difference together. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying, basic, 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 like you know, what I'm saying how you were raised and stuff like that from your from your mother. And now you know, she said she had a little more of the masculine uh, energy and ideology and stuff. And from your dad, you you got more, you know, got more emotional support from that. Right. So being that you've you've learned all that, you know, you, you realize where that's coming from. Like when you're in this given time point in time now, like is that something that you're working on as far as you know? not becoming so much as they would say the asshole, asshole from from the outer looks in, from the outer looks of it because it could be i feel like it, it, it's i feel like sometimes that you think a little bit before you say something i do when it comes to emotion yes and i feel that a lot and of how it. you explain it okay okay well i feel a lot of it as i'm trying to be a nice guy okay in a sense, but it comes out the wrong way. It's what? because I feel like my mother had had an influence on that. Okay. In a sense that sometimes when it comes to communication, she can struggle with that a little bit. Okay. But in not in a bad way, but it's in a way that where it might be a cultural difference because she's from the Philippines. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And okay. you're a foreigner. Right. But in the end, I am working towards balancing that. Is because I realize that 
the world is full of hatred mm. and full of negativity. Okay. And if I'm over here trying to fight it, right, and fill right. it up with love, I'm contradicting myself. Mm. Hell, my name is Love It. Yeah. Yeah, man. So you know what I'm saying? Like Where's I'm not living love, up man? to my name, you know. Where is the love? <laughs> Can you know, this man got a name like Love It, man? And I, well, I wish I would have a name like Joshua love it. Ray Love It. Yep. So many things I could so, and it's Ray on top of that. Like it just sounds like a product line. Sounds like that, like a name like let's throw them white boy names like Charlie Rose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can, like, jo- you can be Ray Love It. Ray Love It. Josh Love It. You know what the coincidence is, what right? Is it? My stepdad, his last name is Ray. Ain't that something? See how so the, uh, it's funny how my name is Josh. Yeah, I can, so I can go by Joshua Ray or Joshua Love It. True. Or I can just do both, like them uh, Spanish. They be doing yeah, Ray Love It. Yeah, Ray Love It. You know, yeah, that, that, sounds, that sounds like a product or something. Ray Love It. You know, but you know, just just going back to it, man. Like, because this, this is interesting. This is new to me. You know, what I'm saying just 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 some of the, the upbringing and stuff that you had. So it's like. Okay, because I've always wanted to know exactly where it kind of came from, mm-hmm. but then I think that's where I saw like where our where our friendship c- could could gel because it's like oh, okay, so if we were gonna do far left, far right, right, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like you know, you you would be on the right side, far right, and I'll be on on the on the left side, like more of the social kind of guy, like social. Just sort of like, hey man, everything's cool. Y'all gonna be? Don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? And then on this other, no. Everything's not gonna be all right. We, we this the mother, this thing just broke, and I don't know what to do with it. You know what I'm saying? So like, I need everybody to be upset. I'm like, well, wait, I I want them just to be happy, so they won't know what's going on. Right, and right, right, right. We can go figure this out over here in the corner. It's like, <laughs> all right, man, what's the problem? We need to go to Walmart or something, pick up something to get fixed. Like, because we don't want them to know, you know. So, it, that that's all. I've always wondered that, bro. I always wondered, like, man, you know, why why does Josh have less of the Mr. Nice Guy appeal? And, but then on me, I ask myself, why do I have so much of it? Well, see, you got to ask yourself. We do share two things in common. Okay. Or one thing in common. Okay. And whatever I do, I try to put my best foot forward. Okay. Your approach, you're too cool to be embarrassed. True. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That so, is true. Like, so, like, so, really, they go hand in hand. Like, you're yeah. over here socializing, mm-hmm. but then you're like, "Hold on, Josh, come on, let's get it fixed, bro. I'm too cool yeah, to yeah. be embarrassed over yeah, yeah. here." Yeah, you know, because it's yeah. like, can you imagine telling them, like, "Yeah, guys, the shoot's over." Yeah. Well, why? Well, it really ain't got nothing to I do. I want my with... money back, and you're like, yeah. but then you just spit the money. Yeah. You're like, uh, like so, uh. What we're going to do is we're going to come back tomorrow and make, you know, this Man. is just a... And I'm like, bro, nah, that shit won't be fixed until like next week. Oh, dang. Yeah. It, see, like, now well, put you in the jam. Now you're becoming mm-hmm. an asshole. Yeah. At yeah. that minute, a lying one. Yeah. You yeah. See? I'm about to find out something. I'm about to find a way. <laughs> no, come on outside real quick, man. Let's smoke something. Then, you know, <laughs> I lay it on them. They forgot I even told them. Dang, next week. Well, yeah, he did tell us that, man. But, you know. You're the guy that like... I told I told you this before. Mm-hmm. Like, you would fire someone, mm-hmm. but they would come back to work the next day. Yeah, they they're like, "Oh, I was fired." <laughs> <laughs> so, what was smoking the blunt? What, what right. were we doing? We were bonding, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I didn't think you were gonna come back. Yeah, you Dang. know, you too, you're too good for this. Yeah, you know, well, I, you know, I was gonna do better mm-hmm. though. But no, you're too good for this. True. That's what you would say. This job. True. But then they would still come back the next day. I mean, I'm gonna do so that. That adds an importance. Then, do you feel like the fact that you kind of have the opposite of gender roles, I would suppose? Mm-hmm. <sighs> and then for me, I had probably the cliche gender role, but I think you know my mother really pressed the issue of just catering to women. Got you. I already had a distrust for men for my situation, so right, now right. I'm really catering to women. And that's where I mean it, it was simple shit sometimes too, you know. It was a simple shit, and so I See. and I never really got the woman that I always really wanted because of that, uh, you know what I mean? But I felt like if I had, if I had to have that balance of like, okay, man, you know what I'm saying, a woman, the nature and stuff. Like I, I think I think my game would have been a little, 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 a little balanced and stuff mm-hmm. where my game didn't look like I was just pandering to women all the time, mm-hmm. you know. But isn't that the issue today? Is that women feel less pandered to? 
Yeah, they Cambridge. saying that now. That's that's what confuses me though. Like, what do you want? Do you want a chivalric nice guy, ladies? Or do you do you want an asshole? Because even on this day, like, you know what I'm saying? Shoot. Mine even tells me, like, well, you can know, be an asshole, but like, I like it. Right. So that's but you set that boundary though. Yeah. So in other words, like, <clears throat> like to conclude all this, man, let's just Yeah. Like niceness isn't the problem it's the lack of boundaries mm. so stand tall be kind and mm -hmm. never be a doormat look at them negroes in there and say that because i don't think that heard you but... <laughs> niceness isn't the problem it's yeah. the lack of boundaries stand tall and don't be a doormat just be yourself and if they don't like you they just don't like you it's okay you're not gonna win every fight just be you and i promise you in the end you'll win the war and what he said uh, to just say no. I mean, I'm not saying for any reason. If there is a reason to say no and it doesn't fit your steed or that's something that you don't feel comfortable doing or it's messing up something else, just say no. It's okay to say no. It's okay to say no. If you can't do something, if a woman asks you, can you do this? No, I can't do this. Can you do this? Or well, you don't want to do it. Yeah. That song we did back in the day, I'm uh, give it, was you called, it was called, well, not that too, but it was called I'm Cheap. Okay. But, here, I'm but, here, but not saying we cheat. I have a cheat mentality. But <laughs> you know what I mean? I ain't gonna lie, I have a cheap thing. I'm not gonna spend my whole dollar if I have one. I'm gonna <laughs> find a way to get 50 cents. So, all right. So, but, but what we were talking about, we were saying, you know, saying like it it, it was the, the cheap thing was um is it I'd rather go to Mickey D's, you know, that will be swell for me. And in other words, just saying like you have to be able to be comfortable with where you're at in your life and you don't have to feel like you have to give a woman this whole facade of what you think they want to hear, right? That will make them comfortable and happy. If I can't look, if I can't get that, if I can't get that meal at Camino Real, mm -hmm. Hey, listen, I, I, look, I can't get that meal. I mean, I know these dudes be spending stuff on you, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's either Mickey D's or that three ninety nine box of Domino's. But let me ask you something. Yeah. What about going to Food Line and making Camino Real? Oh, yeah, we can do that. But it might cost more, though, because, I mean, I really only got, like, $7, so we can... I mean, you can we have can some something. ingredients missing. You don't have to... Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. make some spaghetti, no sauce. Yeah. You it's know, it's the thought that counts. It's the thought that counts. Yeah, because you know, you're painting this whole facade of Camino Real, right? Yeah. Well, tell a girl, I'm bringing Camino Real to you. Mm. Ooh. She's going to be like, that's cheap. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good, but it's the thought that matters. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Say 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 no. And if it if it's not right, it's okay. Don't simp and just say yes because you want to be this nice guy and please everybody. Because from where we, we've been talking, like it turns some women off to hear yes men all the time. Right. It's not a very attractive thing to do. So, anyways, man, I appreciate you coming. You know, coming by like you do. It's all right, brother. And like I said, this is Clean Cut Conversations, and we're out. But by the way, before we go, we're going to release a handbook, a PDF file that you can download. Mm. Just send us your email and comment below, book, and we will send that book to you. It is the Nice Guys Finish Fast book. Mm. It gives you all the tactics you need to be in a nice guy and being successful in the dating scene. Because, you know, you can still be nice. But you can be nice with boundaries and tactics. Now, you said fast. Most people here are used to saying last. So why'd you say fast? It's because the objective is, is to get what you want and still be satisfied. There we have it. That makes sense. Oh, man, that's some game right there. I may have to skate that one.